In 1966, the cover of Time magazine asked, Is God Dead? The article explored the question, did this universe, this planet, and life come into existence independent of an intelligent creator? Science seemed to be eliminating God. Today, most people believe or assume that contemporary science has ever more firmly established that everything came about through random material processes, a view called materialism. Belief in God, so we are told, is only for those so psychologically weak that they need to invent imaginary friends. All the really smart people believe in science. Of course, that's hardly the case. In fact, since the famous time cover story, and even well before, science has made discovery after discovery that has piled up evidence for what we would call design. Science continually points to a supreme intelligence that lies beyond science. Many of the most accomplished scientists of our time now admit this, some openly, some more quietly, lest their careers suffer. Those still faithful to the old materialist story that an infinite amount of time plus chance plus matter could produce everything we see today have become ever more panicked, kind of like children in floaties clinging to their side of the pool. The Big Bang changed everything. No, not the TV show The Big Bang. The discovery that 13.8 billion years ago, our universe came into existence from the explosion of an infinitely dense and infinitely hot state. This explosion has been expanding outward ever since, creating nebulae, galaxies, supernovas, stars, planets, asteroids, comets, and anomalies like black holes. Everything changed because we could now do the math. There wasn't an infinite amount of time for random events to produce our world. A lot, yes, but only so much. The question became, what were the odds? It turns out to be a devastating question to the old materialist gospel. The more scientists learn, the more they realize how improbable it is that we are here at all. These findings now constitute the fine-tuned universe argument, which even the late Christopher Hitchens, the most prominent of the new atheists, admitted was the best argument for God. For example, we live in a universe whose four fundamental forces, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear forces exist in a finely calibrated relationship without which our universe could never have come into being. This relationship didn't evolve, it popped into existence less than one millionth of a second after the Big Bang itself and has remained constant ever since. We also happen to live in what's called the galactic habitable zone one that's a late-type spiral galaxy with orderly orbits, a rare type that's suited for life. And our placement within that galaxy also happens to be perfectly suited for life. One way of visualizing the hundreds of miraculous coincidences that had to happen in order for our universe, galaxy, solar system, and planet to exist and support life is to realize that someone could have destroyed the possibility of life by subtracting or adding the mass of a single dime to the entire observable universe. We live on a planet, Earth, that meets more than 200 unique conditions necessary for life to exist. For example, if the planet that we call Jupiter were not precisely where it is in our solar system, there would be no life on Earth. Its incredible mass and gravity acts like a solar system vacuum cleaner that keeps asteroids and comets and meteors, like the one that extinguished the dinosaurs, from constantly bombarding the Earth. If the moon wasn't exactly the size that it is and exactly the distance it is from Earth, and if the Earth wasn't exactly the size it is in relation to the moon, there could be no life on Earth. More improbable than anything else is the emergence of life from non-life. Wait, you say, life evolved? Of course, you may remember reading in your high school textbook 
about how Stanley Miller and Harold Urey in 1952 made a soupy mixture of chemicals and zapped it with electricity, which briefly created an amino acid, the first basic building block of life. This experiment was hailed as confirmation of how life emerged from non-life. In the 70 years since that experiment, however, biologists have been unable to create even a single protein, let alone a single-celled organism. And in that time, other scientists have discovered the overwhelming complexity of even simple single-celled organisms, which contain DNA, the most complex code ever written. The mathematical odds against life emerging randomly from non-life are so astronomical, we don't even have the numbers to express it. It's like saying that if you flip a coin, you can get it to land on its edge a million times in a row. The strong inference from the best scientific evidence today is that we live in a fine-tuned universe designed from the outset, from before the Big Bang, to bring everything we know into being, including humanity. You can certainly be agnostic about what type of designer brought the universe into being. What you can't deny is that the current scientific evidence points to an intelligence that animates all things, the God in whom we move and have our being, to quote the Bible, quoting Greek poetry. Atheism is no longer intellectually defensible. It's the faith of people so prideful that they claim the exclusive right to be the high priests of civilization's dominant religion, if not little gods themselves. Maybe that pride is also responsible for atheism being the most destructive dogma ever embraced by humanity. In the 20th century, over 150 million people were killed by nations that officially embraced atheism. 150 million. Let that register. From the Gulag to Mao's Cultural Revolution to the Khmer Rouge's killing fields in Cambodia to the Uyghurs in China today, atheism produces slaughter. Because it's logical. If everything came about by chance, nothing means anything. So if slaughter on an industrial scale serves your purpose, why not? There's no arc of history. There is your meaningless existence and then the grave. Butcher whom you may. Or maybe everything does mean something. We aren't here by chance, but by design. Science suggests as much. Maybe everything means everything, just as we hope in our heart of hearts. The evidence from science alone is astonishing. <laughs>